On the 13th of the 5th of the 21st, the Galactic Senate, shaken by the news that the Confederacy of Independent Systems was amassing a Droid army on Geonosis, passed the Military Creation Act, formally adopting the Grand Army of the Republic. The deployment of a full-fledged clone army from a planet nobody had even heard of was a shock to the galaxy, but one that most of the Republic seemed content to go along with. They did, after all, have little choice. With how hastily the GAR was adopted, you might suspect the Senate didn't fully consider the implications of taking on a clone army, and you'd be right. In this video, we'll be discussing the problems with clones the Republic didn't want to acknowledge. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Cloning was a tricky business, and it came with hazards that no cloners were able to completely eliminate. There were several cloning methods in use across the Republic by the time of the Clone Wars, as we discussed in a fairly recent video. The Arcanian method was the most well known, and a majority of other prominent cloning methods were either based on it or worked in a similar manner. Most of the galaxy was familiar with how the Arcanian method worked, and with the dangers that came with it. The Arcanians grew their clones over a much shorter period than the Kaminoans, keeping them incubated in nutrient mixes straight through to adulthood. Through a method called flash training, skills and memories would painstakingly be coded directly into the brains of developing clones, allowing them to come out fully formed and ready for whatever task was ahead of them in just a year. This might seem far more efficient than the Kaminoans 10 year method, but it came with a catch. Flash training was only so effective. As scientists and clone buyers quickly found, memory programming could only impart a facsimile of real experiences, which left clones lacking in true skill. These clones really were little more than living droids, to the point that most potential buyers of Arcanian clones just used droids instead. Furthermore, Arcanian clones were notoriously liable to become unstable. Clones who were grown too quickly were prone to develop something called clone madness, a form of violent psychosis that resulted from the deterioration of cloned brains. One year was considered to be the absolute minimum amount of time in which clones could be grown, and three to five years was considered necessary to avoid clone madness entirely. The cause of clone madness was unknown. Some scientists believed it was just a matter of the brain being grown too quickly, resulting in it being unable to handle flash training. The Jedi, however, had an alternative theory. They believed that clones caused a sort of double presence in the Force, and that clones grown too quickly could sense this, driving them mad. This theory appears to have been closer to the truth as Grand Admiral Thrawn was able to safely grow clones in just 15 days by using Salamiri, a type of force resistant lizard to cut off the clones from the force during development. The Kaminoans considered their cloning methods an improvement over those of the Arcanians for several reasons. Firstly, their extended development periods not only allowed clones to develop more fully, but they also allowed them to receive proper training. The Kaminoans still used flash training, but only to a degree and their regimens mostly consisted of proper training exercises. Furthermore, the Kaminoan method drastically decreased both the risk and severity of clone madness, an added bonus. Without a doubt, Kaminoan methods produced the best clones in the galaxy, but they weren't without their own side effects. 3.5% of each clone batch was aberrant, and while this was impressively low considering the various hiccups cloning often came with, it was still quite a lot of clones. Now, not all clone aberrations were serious. They usually included things like off-color eyes or hair, but there were more serious cases as well. These included extensive physical deformities, as in the case of 99, or mental troubles, as in the case of Alpha 02, who had been grown with many of Jango Fett's memories intact. The Kaminoans typically responded to these sorts of aberrations by taking the aberrant clones out back and putting them down, but they weren't always able to catch aberrations before the clones got to the front lines. In the distant past, we've speculated as to whether a number of our favorite clones were actually defective due to the levels of independence they showed. In extreme cases, this led clones to actually betray the Republic, as in the case of Sergeant Slick. Other clones developed something similar to clone madness as a result of the stress of battle. One particularly infamous defective clone, dubbed the Mad Clone of Caecilius by the Holonet, went insane during a recon mission under Operation Dirge's Lance and turned on his squad. He was found sitting among the corpses of his batches and upon being questioned by Republic intelligence, he insisted that his squad mates had been replaced by cleverly disguised commando droids as part of a training exercise. 
You'd think that after millennia of developing cloning technology, the Kaminoans might have been able to eliminate such defects. But genetics was a complicated science and the Kaminoans discovered that the human genome, as a consequence of its versatility, was extraordinarily tricky to work with. Aberration rates in human clones were always high because of something that frustrated Kaminoan geneticists, factor H, an inherent unpredictability that resulted from human hormones. Most cloners sterilized their products for obvious reasons, but in making the Grand Army of the Republic, the Kaminoans, after a lengthy debate, decided not to. For reasons unknown, sterilizing human clones, and thus removing factor H from the equation, drastically decreased the effectiveness of units, leading to mental instability, poor unit cohesion, decreased aggressiveness, and an inability to think creatively. Even more frustratingly for the perfectionist Kaminoans, there were no working alternatives to factor H. Artificial hormones, dietary supplements, and rewiring the brain all failed to correct the problem. To combat the obvious dangers of an army of clones capable of reproduction, the Kaminoans attempted to, quote, channel the clone unit's normal human impulses for pair bonding and reproduction into unit cohesion and mission preparation. In other words, they desperately hoped the clones would choose bros over hoes. But these solutions obviously weren't perfect, which leads us to the other problems posed by the clone army. The Republic was far from prepared to receive the Grand Army of the Republic. They spent the first month of the Clone Wars working out many of the inevitable kinks that came along with adopting such a massive army, but they only really considered the problems they had to deal with in the moment. Palpatine was the only being in the entire Republic who had plans for the end of the Clone Wars and beyond. Most loyalists didn't even consider what would happen to the GAR after the war was over. An uncomfortable truth that the Republic never really confronted was that the clones would have to go somewhere after the end of the Clone Wars. They could have tried to stave off the integration of clones into civilian society for as long as possible, forcing them to stay in the military, finding alternative jobs for them, or any number of similar solutions. But sooner or later, they would have had to make a choice between euthanizing the whole army or letting them integrate into the civilian galaxy. The moral problems with the former are pretty obvious, so we're going to focus on the plethora of issues that came with the second instead. Releasing millions of biologically identical humans with the capacity to reproduce would inevitably have huge consequences for the human genome, as Jango Fett's DNA would have become massively overrepresented in the galactic gene pool. The job market, housing market, and galactic economy as a whole would have suffered similarly as well. In general, there wasn't really a way to properly prepare for a few million adults suddenly entering society at once. The militaristic nature of the empire meant it didn't really have this problem, as it had plenty of new jobs to shuffle clones into, but the Republic wouldn't have been so lucky. It was common knowledge, if not something the Republic talked about much, that the Republic had no idea what to do with the clones after the war. Separatist propagandists worked tirelessly to use this for fearmongering, warning loyalist citizens about the dangers of clones via CIA shadow feed broadcasts. One propagandist, the infamous geneticist Ul Haber, claimed that the clones of the GAR were far less stable than the Republic said they were, and that there was a significant risk of them going insane and slaughtering civilians. Haber claimed that the Republic planned to give entire planets to the clones after the war, and that these liberty worlds would be ruled by law of the blaster. All of this was obviously just propaganda, but there was a kernel of truth within it. There was no way the clones would have been able to reintegrate without huge problems for civilian populations. So those are some of the problems with cloning the Republic liked to pretend it didn't exist. But what do you think? If you were a clone, would you choose bros over hoes too? Let us know in the comment section below. And just before you run off guys, if you're interested in history, we have our new channel called The Braved up and running now where we go deep into history and all eras to check out some badasses from them. That's the first link in the description below, and the second one is our Relax Jack music channel where you can find the music we played in this video and in plenty of our other recent videos there, and use them for your own creative projects too. If you want to help support the channel, check us out on Patreon, and if you just want to join our wider community, check us out on our main Geetsleys Discord and our Geetsleys Gaming Network. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.